dear friends today we are going to discuss a very interesting <coughs> topic called the methods of research on future studies so future study research is different from the scientific research which we do in the context of the incidences happen around the education system since we talk about futures uncertainty events have not yet happened so how to study so it will be to extrapolate what is going to happen by studying the trend of incidences happened so far what will happen second a what should happen in future the future can be long term the future can be short term we make different methods for extrapolating forecasting what is going to happen on the basis of the data which are of quantitative nature they are known as extrapolative futures when you say that what should happen what should be the mission what should be the futures scenario and how it should direct our education system so research methods of qualitative nature they are geared towards preferred future scenarios dear friends as you know in scientific methods of inquiry we have quantitative hard data based on and we make use of such hard data based extrapolations we call trend extrapolations we go for regression and predictions so the multivariate analysis procedures are adopted for generating different trends and building alternative paths so that is the implication of quantitative scientific models of inquiry the second model is the qualitative method what should happen what should be preferred on the basis of present experiences what you visualize the trend and how to change this trend to achieve the future's goals so oh, there are different methods called delphi method cross impact analysis method for the experienced people insight based inquiry reflective thinking process is involved to portray the future scenarios so research methods like delphi and cross impact analysis are used for qualitative studies qualitative study doesn't mean that quantitative data are not being used uh, there may be some quantitative analysis involved in such studies today we will talk about nature and types of forecasting since future is dynamic in nature we have a curiosity to understand the uncertainty and to draw a futures scenario 
but such scenarios must be based on the research findings or research processes. So we call as extrapolative futures. Extrapolative futures are based on trained analysis. So these are deterministic type means on the basis of past experiences and trends we are extrapolating that how the future will happen. So behavior of different variables will continue in a particular direction and on a particular period of time we will say that in, if we proceed in this way so we will reach at this particular point. So future here is perceived as following a direction determined by the past trends. Second kind of futures is the normative or preferred futures where we have social expectations. We are talking about transformative education, the transformation for a new life. So we are building the futures as per our values and value systems. So such futures are subjected to the social interventions social interviews and the human interventions and efforts to change the path of life. So it focuses on fulfilling and attaining the desired and preferred future goals. These two kinds of futures are not antagonistic to each other. Extrapolative futures help us to plot the direction provided we move in a particular path where it leads to. But in case of preferred future, it is just reverse back. First we project our future, then we make a reverse gear. From future we come down to the present and we search for alternative paths. So extrapolative future and preferred futures are complementary to each other. Delphi method is a very interesting method. It is basically used in case of strategy development by involving the experts and experienced people by making use of in insightful inquiry systems and intuitive forecasting. The features of Delphi is that we form an image of what the relevant aspects of futures might be, what should be the education's future, and what will be the education's future is determined by our own insightful projections and experiences about. For we make forecasts of probable differential effects of actions through our own efforts. So alternative policies are formulated to achieve the future's goals and we make preferences of these goals and we give priorities to certain goals and try to say that whether the preferred goals through our efforts have been achieved or will be achieved or not. So these are the features of Delphi study. There are different stages of implementation. It talks about identifying the problem of the futures. That means we will have to go for using a particular questionnaire where we will see that what are the levels of occurrences of different events towards our future, say 10 years ahead. So today we are in 2023, so we are saying that what will happen to teaching learning systems in the classroom of 2050. So such questions 
with alternatives are incorporated in a questionnaire. Second part here is that when the questionnaire items are being formulated, we should formulate in such a way that the alternatives may be in three-point scale or four-point scale or five-point scale are given. The good questionnaire is to be developed by a researcher without having any ambiguity so that the experts will find it convenient to fill in the questionnaire and to respond in the alternatives. Third is we collect data from the experts. Data collection takes place in different rounds. Unlike a survey where we collect data at one point of time, in Delphi study, we go for data collection on different rounds. So, in the first round, we go for collecting data from the experts. And after collecting the first round data, we do the analysis of the results of first round data. And in first round data collection, we find some discrepancies among the respondents on answering some questions. So, the discrepancies are identified with application of statistical techniques like quartile deviation or standard deviation of responses. If the variance is high or quartile deviation value is having a large gap, that means the heterogeneity of response has come through first round data. Through Delphi, we are going to minimize the heterogeneity and to arrive at homogeneity or consensus. So, we go for second round data collection. In second round data collection, we approach the experts with the result of first round data. And then we request to reconsider the response of the expert in the first round data and to fill in the questionnaire to arrive at consensus, keeping in view the first round data. If in the second round data collection, the homogeneity has not been identified, then we may go for third round data collection. That means the experts are being contacted time and again through appropriate research methods and procedures and we keep on conducting study through different round data collection to arrive at the consensus. So, our main effort here is to arrive at the consensus through different levels and rounds of data collection from the experts or experienced people. What are the characteristics of Delphi? The Delphi's characteristics is it depends on the intuitive judgment of experts. So, qualitative nature. Second is the anonymity of sources of response. When we go for second round data collection, we do not say who has said what, but we go for the summary without giving who has explained or who has responded in what forms. Third is we go for a statistical summary of the each round data collection. Third is the consensus is the main focus of the study. In this process, when we go for conducting Delphi, 
we find it very much useful in future study for analytical understanding and projections of educational futures and it helps to form the judgment on collective form particularly in the case of curriculum design and making it futuristic oriented curriculum and futuristic oriented teaching learning practices the limitations of delphi is that since it involves the experts we cannot go for a large scale study but our respondents must be picked up chosen in a purposive form and we must seek cooperation of the experts which is a very very tedious job on the part of a young researcher so that he will go to contact him time and again that is the limitation second point is that it is conducted on experts agreement to arrive at consensus the experts may be rigid they may not like to make compromise or their first stand so we'll have to approach and we'll have to convince sir please we consider through your reflective exercise on the basis of first round data summary usually in case of third round data we arrive at consensus but to proceed through a third round repetitive exercise it becomes a cumbersome process now we are talking about another method called cross impact analysis from the name of cross impact analysis we understand that different events of future will influence each other so it is not a unimode analysis of cause and effect but the interaction of different effects with each other with a futuristic orientation so it is a method of exploring probability of occurrence of futuristic events which might have been forecasted through delphi study or through extrapolative or trend analysis studies and now we will like to see that how these probable events will interact or inter influence each other in future this part will say that the expert's opinion about occurrence of future events are to be studied through cross impact analysis and the experts will judge what will be the effect of one future event on another future event intervalia event 1 influencing event 2 simultaneously event 2 will influence event 1 and this interaction is to be judged by the experts in the context of time time means which event will come first which event will come next so it is known as time forecast then second is effect interaction one event will affect another internally another event will affect the first event third part is the force one event will affect another event with negative force but to what level the minimal negative level another effect will influence the first effect 
may be positively to what extent may be to a large extent so this is known as force and this effect of time effect and force are plotted in a matrix so there are different stages of cross impact analysis study where different kinds of forecasted events are plotted in a matrix and the experts are asked to give their judgment on the time effect and force of the relationship between different future forecasted events so the first stage is we must identify the problem and we must forecast the events to be studied for example towards 2035 all government high schools will have multi purpose ict devices the second uh, event is 80% of teachers working in schools will have ict teaching learning competencies third event is there will be integrated teacher education program that will cover from pre primary stage to higher secondary stage which will be a four year integrated program for the at least 30% of school curriculum will have entrepreneurship oriented skill based vocational competency based courses that will be an integral part of school curriculum now we will plot a questionnaire and we will ask the experts on two points to what extent e1 will affect e2 event 1 will affect event 2 second is what will be the effect or impact of e1 on e2 please enumerate that may be in qualitative form now the data which will come in the form of quantitative and qualitative form they will be analyzed by developing a cross impact matrix i have given one example of a cross impact analysis by quoting a study which was conducted by us a few years back that is on the educational scenario towards future one is expansion of open and distance education third second is there will be new discoveries in open distance education system third is the advancement of science and technology in our society and technology driving lifestyle fourth is the equity and advancement of education for inclusive and equitable education fourth one is the students participation in campus politics to be reduced next is educated unemployment will be rampant and last point here we forecasted there will be progress of on the job learning continuing education lifelong learning for every professional group including teachers so these events how they will affect each other with what force the upward mark as you say 
for example expansion of open distance education will have positive upward influence on new discoveries in distance education system second example is expansion of open distance education will have positive impact on advancement of science and technology savvy society third expansion in open and distance learning system will decrease the probability of participation of students in politics expansion of open distance learning system will contribute to enhancement or alarming growth of educated unemployment expansion of open distance learning system will contribute to enhancement of opportunities for on the job professional training and continuing education now let us see on the other side the new discoveries in open and distance learning system will contribute to expansion of open distance learning system in a positive form it will contribute to advancement of science and technology it will contribute to education of weaker section of society with equity and inclusion but it has nothing to do with decrease in students participation in politics like this if you see each event and its effect on another event is plotted on a matrix with upward and downward symbols for example increase in educated unemployment will affect negatively the students participation in politics it means it may contribute to increasing students participation in politics so through cross impact analysis technique on a topic called distance education in 21st century that was conducted by us that projects a scenario in quantitative form followed by the qualitative analysis of data as reported by experts so the cross impact analysis method is very much useful in identifying the developing the plan of action on education for future so in previous stage provides clues about the most powerful and least powerful occurrence of events and their impacts on each other the results are placed before experts with qualitative narrations of experience of people then the experts discuss on the cross impact analysis data and it leads to development of action plans for further course of action for example in case of policy formulation curriculum development teacher development programs development of strategies for integration of technology in teaching learning system such exercise is done through researched efforts where we make plan and we develop scenario for future that will help us to take decisions about education so perspective planning oriented research in education give emphasis on cross impact analysis based research paradigm so cross impact analysis has the advantage because it is a futuristic method which indicates the future events 
are seldom discreet or usually they are interrelated with each other so we will have to take into account each component of future and their interactions it can be used for continuing with or integrating what i said the mixed method embedded design so one method can be embedded with another method trend extrapolation method can be embedded with cross impact analysis method delphi exercise can be embedded with cross impact analysis method to give a holistic picture about the futures and perspective plan there are limitations of cross impact analysis that it is very difficult to judge the directions in which one event will affect another event and it is purely based on the insightful projections the second part is the impacts of events are explored on the basis of our qualitative intuitive judgments so we cannot go for a large number of events and to study the interaction of large number of events on each other so the matrix cannot be a very large matrix maximum it goes for 6 7 or 8 areas to avoid jargon of qualitative analysis so we go for limited number of events and we try to see their relationships dear friends we discussed about two methods of future study called delphi and cross impact analysis method you can incorporate these methods in education for sustainable development research by projecting the future events which may be of extrapolative and futuristic in nature and preferred in nature so that we can promote futuristic orientations to educational research which will facilitate the perspective planning policy formulations future scenario development curriculum practices and curricular practice developments development of curriculum and design of futuristic curriculum exploring alternative approaches of evaluation strategies exploring alternative approaches of teacher development and professional development of teachers so the research questions which are a futuristic in nature they must take into account the events and the effects inside education system and outside education system since sustainable development is a multidisciplinary and futures projection is of multidisciplinary nature thank you very much sir